All right, everybody, welcome back. As you saw just a couple days ago, the uh, Cubs won their game here on this date. This is uh, May 4th, 1908. Uh, the Giants have their turn up against the uh, Phillies. Now, if you know your history, you know that the Giants historically had trouble with the Phillies, but it wasn't because of anybody the Phillies have on the uh, roster at the moment. It was uh, Kovaleski who gave him, uh, who gave them the trouble. Actually, look at that. He is on the roster. Um, and uh, Kovaleski, of course, had only six starts um, uh, in, or five starts rather, in real life. Um, apparently, is on the uh, roster for the entire season. I'm not sure if that's actually accurate or not. So you know, I um, used uh, there is a uh, old Diamond Mine Baseball um, homebrew disc that I've used for my uh, transaction sources for these uh, season uh, for this uh, 1908 replay. So perhaps we should be starting Kovaleski now. I don't know. I haven't actually done the research to sort of figure out what we should or shouldn't be doing. I know it's easy to do, but I want to play the game instead. Um, uh, Kovaleski was known as the giant killer um, for uh, the work that he did against uh, New York um, at the end of the season in 1908, which is why I suspect that Harry probably wasn't on the uh, Phillies this early. It's hard to do transaction research. We're going to start this off for the Phillies with Red Dew on top of the first inning. Giants at 12-5, and five, Phillies at 7-10. and 10. Dewin rolls a 55 for an A, and that's going to be a single off Joe McGinnity, and then he is caught stealing because of the little C, so there's one out with Eddie Grant up there. Grant rolls a 33 for a 7. That's a clean single to right. No little C to worry about. That'll bring up John Titus. Titus hitting 294, 342 on base percentage, 353 slugging percentage with eight uh, runs batted in. And uh, he rolls a 22 for a 7, which is another clean single, sending Grant over to third. So McGinnity has faced three batters, given up three hits. That'll bring up uh, Kitty Bransfield. Kitty Bransfield comes up there hitting 310, hitting quite well so far this season, also with just a little hair of power, no home runs. And um, he rolls a 26 for a 27. That is going to be a ground ball over to uh, Devlin, who goes to Doyle for one and back on to first for the double play. And so the Giants get out of that one um, with uh, just a little bit of a scare. The uh, Phillies leave one uh, man on. We go to the bottom of the first inning, and I tell you, that's one of those uh, things that uh, makes you happy for the Giants to have uh, such good fielding. Without good fielding, they'd be in trouble. Roger Bresnahan now rolls a 33 for a 7, and there's a base hit. Hit number 4 of this game, both teams combined. Is it 1908, or is it something different? Mike Donlin up there rolls a 54 for a 45. It'll be a fly ball over to Titus in right field for the first out. One away. Fred Tenney now rolls a 26 for a 29. That's a little comeback here to Frank Cord. Then turns around, throws over to the shortstop behind him. Doolin for the force at second. Good play by Cord. Runner on at first now is Tenney. Two outs. And here's our Devlin. Devlin rolls a 12 for a 24. It's going to be a ground ball over to Doolin. The uh, shortstop flips that one over to Knabe at second for the out. We go to the bottom or the top of the second, rather. And here is uh, Fred Osborne for the Phillies. He's hitting 294. These Phillies are pinning pretty well. Osborne rolls a 42 for a 13 and strikes out. One away. And here is Otto Knabe hitting 217. For 1908, that's, that's pretty good. He rolls a 61 for a 32. It's a fly ball over to right field. Donlin has that for the out two away. And here's Sherry McGee. He of the infamous uh, McGee misspelled uh, T206 baseball card. That is the same player. And uh, he uh, rolls a 23 for a 32. It's a fly ball over to right field. Donlin has it for the out. We go to the bottom of the second. Here's Larry Doyle. Doyle rolls a 66 for a 0. Here we go. And the next roll is a 26 for a 6. It's a double to right center field. That'll bring up Spike Shannon. Shannon hitting 259 with a little bit of uh, power, getting on base fairly well. His roll is a 25 for a 10. That'll be a uh, ground ball over to the uh, left side. Grant has it. Throws over to first for the out, and Doyle moves up to uh, third. That'll bring up Al Bridwell. Bridwell hitting 261, and that uh, means that we're going to have the infield come in, but we won't bunt with him. And he rolls a 25 for a 10. That's going to be a single, and then Bridwell gets his stolen base, so the Giants go up one nothing, just like that. Here now is uh, Cy Seymour. Bridwell on at uh, second. Seymour rolls a 22 for a 7, and there's a single to right field. That will score the runner. That'll bring up Joe McGinnity with the Giants up 2 nothing, And McGinnity rolls a 54 for a 45. It's a fly ball to center field. Osborne has that for the out, and uh, we go to, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, to right field. Titus has that for the out, two away. I looked a little bit too quick, and here comes Roger Bresnahan with the runner on at first. And look at that. He gets an 11 for a 0. And the next roll is a 26 for a 6. That'll be a double that will score the runner, and it's 3 nothing for New York, and Frank Corden is being knocked out of the box. Mike Donlin's up there, and he rolls a 42 for a 9, and that's going to be a single, which will score the runner. Donlin then thrown out trying to steal. We go to the top of the third. 
Corridon um, having some problems. We're going to leave him in for the time being because I believe in leaving guys in, but if he has more runs given up, he's out. He's toast. Mickey Doolin up there rolls a 44 for an 8, and there's a base hit. Hit number 10 between both uh, teams in this game. Uh, number 4 for the Phillies, who have no runs, and here comes Frank Corridon, and uh, we're going to bunt with him. He rolls a 56 for 34, which is always dangerous. That's a bad bunt over to the left side. Devlin has it um, right on top of that one. Throws over to Bridwell, covering at second for the out. One away, and uh, Corridon ends up the runner on at first. And here is Red Dewin, the uh, catcher, hitting leadoff, of course. 385 average, 385 on base percentage, so he's not taking many walks. And uh, 410 is the slugging percentage. That's why we hit him first. This is the reason why he rolls a 15 for an 11, and that's a single. Cordon goes to a third, doing then able to steal second with um, Eddie Grant up there. One out here, top of the third. Phillies now are um, on the run, and uh, Grant rolls a 52 for a 27. That's a ground ball over to the third baseman, Devlin, who makes the play and uh, looks Cordon back and throws the first for the out. Two away. The infield was deep that time, by the way, with a 4 nothing lead. No need to worry about this runner on a third. John Titus now, though, rolls an 11 for a 0, and his next roll is a 62 for a 6. There's a chance that McGinnity might give up a home run, and the roll is a 13 within that range. Um, and here we go with the second one, 33 within the second range, and that's a home run from John Titus, and that makes this a 4-3 to three ball game. Hit number 12 in this game, and I feel like this is not 1908. Somebody changed the cards. Somebody did something. Kitty Bransfield up there now, two outs, 4-3 to three now Giants. And uh, Kitty rolls a 44 for a 7. It's a clean single to right. And the Phillies have now officially outhit the Giants. I mean, we're only in the top of the third. 7 to 6 and hits. Fred Osborne rolls a 45 for a 14. And that's a ball. McGinnity finally prevents something bad from happening. But the next roll is a 66. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Man. And his uh, second roll is a 31 for a 2. And that will tie the ball game after that triple by Osborne. McGinnity goes down to being a D. And here's Otto Kne, 4-4 four four ball game, 8 hits for the Phillies. We're only in the top of the third. The dice got hot, baby. Kne up there rolls a 34 for 44. Little E rolls up there, and it's a 62, and that's out of the range. It's a fly ball over to center field. Seymour has that for the out. We go to the bottom of the third, tied at four. Now you know the reason why I roll the dice myself, right? I know that it doesn't look like much. I probably could work on the presentation. But the reason why I roll the dice myself is because this way, when something like this happens, you know what's going on. You know that this isn't because of some weird computer programming thing or some glitch or some problem with the auto number generator or whatever, right? Or the random number generator, I should say. You know that this is happening by hand. Fred Tenney now, um, the batter, rolls a 32 for a 26. That's a ground ball over to Otto Knabe, who throws the first for the out, one away. It's Art Devlin now, and he rolls a 26 for a 29. That goes back to Corridon, who throws the first for the out, two gone. Larry Doyle up there rolls a 52 for a 27. That is a ground ball over to the third baseman, Grant, who has it. Throws the first for the out. We go to the top of the fourth. Sherry McGee now, the uh, batter for the Phillies. He rolls a 56 for a 13, and he will strike out one away. It's Mickey Doolin. Doolin rolls a 55 for an 8. That's a single, and then he's caught stealing. That's hit number 9 for the Phillies. Here is uh, Frank Cord on the pitcher. He stayed in. I said uh, what I was going to do, and I've done it. Corridor rolls a 62 for a 12. There is a little E roll. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. This is a 24 just missing the range. Ends up being a uh, ground ball over to Tenney, who uh, the first baseman does it himself over to the bag for the out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Here's Spike Shannon. And uh, Spike rolls a 51 for a 9. It's a pop-up over the left side. Grant has that for the out. One away. Here's Bridwell. Al rolls a 13 for a 14, and he takes his base on the walk, and that'll bring up Cy Seymour. Bridwell, is he fast? Yes, he is. I feel like every player uh, for John McGraw was fast like this. Here's a hit and run, and the roll is an 11 for a 0. And the next roll is a 42 for a 6, and that's a double to right field, and that will score the runner who was moving, and that makes this a 5-4 to four ball game. And that really is going to be about it for Corridon. He hasn't fooled anybody today, giving up 7 hits and 5 runs. We're going to take him out, and uh, why not? Why not? Harry Kovaleski, as long as he's on the team this early, whether it's legitimate or not, is going to come in, and uh, he will be the uh, relief pitcher here for the Phillies and uh, see if the Phillies can't uh, get some runs here. Joe McGinnity up there, runner on his second base, one out. And the roll is a 16 for a 28. That's going to be a ground ball over to the shortstop, Doolin, who throws the first for the out. Seymour moves up despite that ball being hit in front of him. Very brave of him to do that. And here's Roger Bresnahan. Last time we had this, he uh, got a double, scored a, or drove in a run. This time he rolls a 42 for a 14 and gives up a walk. So now there's runners on uh, the corners, first and third for Mike Donlin. 
Dahlin rolls a 51 for a 7, and that's going to be a fly ball over to center field. Osborne has that for the out, and we go to the top of the 5th. The 7 with runners on 1st and 3rd is interesting. In fact, all the boards are interesting there because uh, everything changes. That's why it's an exciting game. Here is Red Dewan, top of the 5th inning. Kind of a slow-moving ball game with all these hits. Dewan rolls a 63 for a 31. That's a fly ball to center field, and Seymour has it for the out. One away, and here's Eddie Graham. Eddie rolls a 41 for a 28. That's a ground ball over to Bridwell. The shortstop throws the first for the out. Two away. John Titus now, and he rolls a 45 for a 14. McGinnity gives up the walk. There's a little less, so Titus is able to steal second at, on the uh, tail end of that, and he is in scoring position with two outs for Kitty Bransfield. And Kitty rolls a 14 for a 43. Here's the little E rule. It's a 43 out of the reins. It's a fly ball over to center field, and Seymour has that for the out. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Nine hits for the Phillies with four runs. Giants with five runs, seven hits. No errors for either team. 16 hits total in this game. Odd for 1908, isn't it? Fred Tenney rolls a 35 for a 14, and he will take first on the walk. It's walk number two given up by Harry Kovaleski in his small amount of time pitch, not even an inning. Here is Art Devlin, and Devlin rolls a 54 for a 45. It's a fly ball over to right field. The right fielder Titus has that for the out, one away, and here's Larry Doyle. Doyle rolls a 23 for a 32. It's a rough fly ball again to right field, and it's Titus again for the second out. And here's Spike Shannon, and Kovaleski's a D. Shannon rolls a 22 for an 8, and that's going to be a single, and that will send Tenney to third. Shannon, however, then is caught stealing, and we go to the top of the sixth inning. 5-4 remains. That means 17 hits so far in this game between the two teams combined. Fred Osborne now in the top of the sixth for the Phillies. Rolls a 52 for a 27. That's a ground ball over to third base. Devlin has it. Throws the first for the out. One away. And here's Otto Knade. He rolls a 66 for a zero. And uh, then a 54 for a six. That's going to be a double for Knade as it tells me he didn't have any home runs in real life. So they won't give him the chance of uh, teeing one off of uh, McGinnity. Let's see if McGinnity can get out of this inning. Sherry McGee up there now. He rolls a 35 for a nine. That's going to be a single and will score the runner. And then McGee, McGee is caught trying to steal. Two outs now, 5-5 five to five ball game, and McGinnity did give up the run, and here is Mickey Doolin. Nobody on, two outs, top of the six, 5-5 five, five score, and Doolin rolls a 21 for a 30. Fly ball over to left field. Shannon has that for the out, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's Al Bridwell up there for the Giants. Al Bridwell comes up. Uh, he is hitting 271. Um, 329 on base percentage. These Giants were very good at getting on base. You can tell that from the cards where the on base percentage is listed. He rolls a 43 for a 29. Come back over to Kovaleski. Throws to first for the out. One away. Like I was saying in the video yesterday, the idea that getting on base is a good thing is actually nothing new. Guys who understood baseball well, such as John McGraw, understood this. In fact, he played that way when he was a player. Right? Even though the stats weren't there, he knew how to play the game, right? As I said, 3 true outcome very well might be the natural outcome of baseball. Here is Cy Seymour. Rolls a 23 for a 32. There's a fly ball over to right field. Titus has that for the out two away. And here comes McGinnity. Now, uh, we can always say, oh, here comes John McGraw to take him out. But McGraw's not taking him out. I'm taking him out. So get out of there, you bum. We're going to put Fred Merkel in. I know, I know, it's that Fred Merkel. Yeah, he's, calm down. Calm down, everyone. It is that Fred Merkel, and he's going to come in as the pinch hitter. Merkel rolls a 25 for an 8, and that's a single to left center field, um, and uh, that will bring up Roger Bresnahan now with uh, Merkel on at first. And a uh, two-outs, bottom of the six. Here is Roger, and uh, he rolls a 51 for a 9, and that's another infield hit. That's a single, and there are runners now on at first and second. Two outs, and here's Mike Donlin. And he rolls a 51 for a 7, and that's going to be a base hit that will score runs. run, send Bresnahan over to a third, and this is where it's uh, helpful to not have any uh, S uh, players, and that'll bring up Fred Tenney, and I think we're going to do a uh, double switch here if uh, Tenney makes out. 6-5 to five now the score in favor of the Giants after uh, that single by Donlin, and here is Fred Tenney, who's hitting 297, 6 RBIs, and he rolls a 24 for a 13, and we will make the double switch. So um, Merkel, of course, is not going to pitch, although that would be pretty funny. I don't know. Maybe we should do that. What do you think? Uh, we're going to change position only for Merkel. He will play it first, and then Tenny's going to come out. You have to do it in this order because of reasons. Um, ah, yes, and somebody told me if you right-click on the pitcher, you can look and see what they've done so far, and look, you can. So now we can make sure that we don't just use the same pitcher over and over again. We're not going to use Matthewson. We're not going to use Taylor. We're not going to use Wiltsey. Right. We might use Taylor, actually. What has he done so far? He's had play, shown up only in one game so far. And so Taylor is going to be the uh, player, and he's going to be the pitcher, not the first baseman. 
This is also a system that would be nice to update, but, um, you know, you know how I feel about this. Here is Harry Kowaleski, top of the seventh inning, down six to five. We're going to have Kowaleski hit for himself, um, although he is on a short string if he continues to give up base hits. But remember, it's 1908. We don't exactly have a huge bullpen. Kowaleski rolls a 42 for a 13, strikes out. No surprises there. One out here. Luther Taylor getting it done so far. Here's Red Dewin. And he rolls a 24 for a 13. Strike on number two. Surprisingly good for Luther. Eddie Grant now rolls a 33 for a seven. And there's a single to right field. That's hit number 12 for the Phillies. And here comes John Titus. Titus up, uh, has a home run and a single and a walk with a stolen base. Let's see what else he can do. And he rolls a 65 for a 35. Here is, however, that little E roll, which is so important. It's a 31 out of the range. That's a foul out to the catcher. And Bresnahan has that for the out. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Art Devlin up there now facing Harry Kovaleski, and he rolls an 11 for a 1. This is going to be it for Harry. And a 61 for a 6. There's a double to right center field. I think that's going to be it for Kovaleski. The Phillies are still within range, uh, within reach of this game. Let's see what we can figure out. So now that I know this nice trick, um, we can go and uh, take a look at some of these guys. Lou Morin has only uh, appeared in one game. And so it is going to be Lou Morin who comes in with Devlin on his second base and nobody out bottom of the seventh. Larry Doyle's up there, and he rolls a 15 for an 11. And that's a single, and uh, that uh, is going to result in um, the uh, runner being thrown out at home, McGee to Dewan, um, and Doyle then, of course, gets the stolen base that comes with the uh, 11. One out here, bottom of the seventh, still a 6-5 to five game, 13 hits for the Giants. Spike Shannon up there now. Rolls a 64 for a 13, and Morin gets it done that time, too. Do away, and here is Al Bridwell. And he rolls a 24 for a 13. So Morin also with two strikeouts in his inning of work. Um, uh, he's up there along with Luther Taylor in terms of striking them out. The Giants had their chances and um, couldn't get anything across. And we go to the top of the eighth, 6-5 to five the score. Here's Kitty Bransfield, and he rolls a 52 for a 27. Ground ball over to the left side. Devlin has it, throws over to first for the out one away. And here's Fred Osborne. Osborne rolls a 66 for a zero, and then a 32 for a six. Now here's that um, uh, possible increase to a home run. First rolls a 34 out of the range. That's going to be a double for Osborne, and um, uh, that will bring up Otto Knabe, and Taylor now is down to a D. You don't have to worry too much about that. Here's Otto Knabe. He rolls a 46 for a 32. Fly ball over to right field, and uh, it's going to be Don and, uh, Donlin, sorry, who has that for the out, two away, and here's Sherry McGee. Jerry rolls a 32 for a 26. Ground ball over to Doyle, the second baseman, who throws the first for the out. We go to the bottom of the eighth. And it's Cy Seymour up there against uh, Moore, and he rolls a 36 for a 14. We'll take his base on the walk, and that'll bring up Fred Merkel. Merkel, so far this season, one for four, hitting 250 exactly, and he only had that one single, which is why everything is 250. He rolls a 14 for a 43. It's a fly ball to left field. McGee has that for the out, one away, and it's Roger Bresnahan time once again. He's three for three today. And he rolls a 55 for an 8, and he's 4 for 4. It's a single that sends Seymour up to second. That will bring up Mike Donlin. 4 for 4 is Bresnahan. 14 hits for the uh, Giants, and they've been hitting the ball over the park today. Donlin rolls a 42 for a 9, and that's going to be a ground ball over to the uh, left side. Grant has it, throws to first for the out. Both uh, runners move up, and here is Luther Taylor. Now, if this were 2000, well, if this were 2023, um, we would have like eight pitchers in this game for both teams. If this were, say, the 1950s, I would uh, be taking Taylor out here, but it's not. It's 1908. We're going to leave him in. We're going to leave him in. There's no reason to take him out. And, ooh, look at that. He rolls a 66 for a 7. That's a single. We'll score two. And Taylor, who has his first at-bat, I believe, of the season, has um, done it. He has driven in two runs, and it's an 8-5 to five game. And here comes Art Devlin. Devlin rolls a 22 for an 8, and that's a uh, single, but uh, unfortunately, uh, Taylor, not much of a runner, is thrown out at home. Osborne to do in. Second runner that the Phillies have thrown out at the plate, so it could have been worse than this. And we go to the top of the ninth inning, and it's um, going to be Mickey Doolin, the uh, first hitter for the Phillies, who are down by 3, 8 to 5 the score. His roll is a 31 for a 9. That's a single over short, and here comes more in spot in the lineup. And um, we're going to uh, pull up a pinch hitter. So this is my thing. I talked about this the other day. These guys who never really appeared, like, I don't know what to do with them. I'm not going to pinch hit them. <laughs> We're going to put Roy Thomas out there to pinch head because we want to put somebody in there who can do something. Roy Thomas is the pinch hitter here for the Phillies. Nobody out. Mickey Doolin on. You know, let's see what we can do here, actually. We have anybody who's got an F. No, no, no. How about a pitcher? Yes, we have Harry Hoke who has an F, and you are going to become a pinch runner. Harry Hook is the pinch runner. 
He can't get a jump. Whatever. Roy Thomas is up there. Does Hook have an 11? No. So we're not going to hit and run. And there it is. Rolls a 66 for a zero. I don't know who uh, loaded my dice today. Next rolls a 22 for a two. And that's going to be a triple uh, along the right field foul line. And that will score one. And that brings up Dewan. Red Dewan comes up here. Eight to six the score. With uh, Thomas on a third. The infield will be played back. Dewan is going to swing away. He is two for four today. Um, and uh, has uh, scored, I believe, one run, if I understand this right. I think that's what that check stands for. Um, and uh, Luther Taylor... Hmm. Taylor is going to come out of this game. That's what we're going to do here. And uh, we're going to get uh, some of that malarkey out here. Bill Malarkey will come in uh, to uh, face doing. I'm not doing lefty, righty, anything. We're just doing who's available... And uh, when we look at who's available to face Dewan, it's Malarkey. And the rule is at 44 for an eight. That's going to be a fly ball over to right field. Donlin has that one for the out. One away here, top of the ninth, eight to seven, the score now. That'll bring up Eddie Grant. Eddie uh, is uh, two for four today. Uh, average now sitting at 322. And there's nobody on base. The uh, Phillies need a base runner. And his role is a 44 for an 8, and that's going to be a ground ball over to the uh, shortstop uh, Bridwell, who grabs that, throws to first for the out, two away. And here now is John Titus. 8 to 7 to score, 31 hits, two teams combined. This is like a 1930 game. And Titus rolls a 25 for an 8, and that's going to be a fly ball over to center field. Seymour has that for the out, and that will do it. And so the Giants advance to 13 and 5. Phillies go down to 7 and 11, and the Giants are keeping track with the Cubs. And, man, what a game. Have you seen a 1908 game like this? 8-7, to seven, the final score. 31 hits, both teams combined, and no errors. And I don't know what happened, but uh, maybe it's the hot weather or something. These uh, dice were hot. I hope you enjoyed that one. I sure did. I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.